And we are going live to another state. <laughs> All right. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning. 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 So, how is everybody this morning? Good morning. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to Nebraska. Nebraska. Not to be confused with Alaska. We already did that. <laughs> Same. Same pronunciation, different letterings, and all that stuff. So, by a show of hands, has anyone been to, to Nebraska? No, no, no. Well, I have. I am Carrie. Carrie well, done. Well, it's kind of easy for you because you're from there. I was born there, you guys. Oh, Omaha. How many years? Oh, you're from Omaha. Oh, you never said that. Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska, and then moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh wow! You oh, learn wow. something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> so. We're going to be talking about Nebraska, a certain little state you didn't know had some interesting things to talk about. And I'm pretty sure Carrie might have some things to talk about, too. Of course, maybe there are things you didn't know. So I didn't. Fill me in. So let's talk about this. So start with the flag. We have the Yankee blue field over here, and then you have the great seal of Nebraska. So there are plenty of pictures to see here. Is it cold out there? We'll talk Give about that minute. later. Yeah. So as you can see here, there's this little ribbon right here that says equality before the law. It's basically talking about its more progressive views of the state. And then right here you have the train. People have said that this is the train that goes through the Oregon Trail. It's debatable. <laughs> then you have a blacksmith who's hammering away. And then you also have all these trees, nature, and all the things that come with it. And on the bottom it says March 1st, 1867. That was the date in which it was established as a U.S. state. Wow. So there's a lot to unpack from this little imagery here. And like I said last week, there are flag designs that get voted in, and there are those that get voted out. This is the one that got voted in because it definitely represents what Nebraska is about as a state and as a culture. So let's move on to the next slide, shall we? So oh, wow. in case any of you are wondering, this is where Nebraska is located. It is surrounded by a bunch of other states. So if you look here, Kansas to the south, Colorado to the southwest-ish, Wyoming to the actual west, north is South Dakota, you got Iowa, Missouri, and uh, speaking of Missouri, hint, hint, where we're going next. Nice. Hint, hint. Hey guys, was that in the middle or the left or the right? The middle. Yes. The middle. Yep, right smacked in the middle. It's right in the heartland. And yeah, as you're going to notice with the heartland, they tend to have the same weather, same geography, same a lot of things. Well, I say a lot of things because there are a few exceptions. Let me promise you right now, a few exceptions to the rule. So as far as uh, Nebraska is concerned, well, the capital is Lincoln, but the large city is Omaha. Omaha. Carrie. <laughs> Carrie is. I am looking at you. Big personalities. We like you. We like you. Yep. So. She's a singer. I like her a lot. All right, let's hear from Jeremy. <laughs> so, as Miss Carrie could probably attest to, there's a lot of flat land. There are some hills here and there, probably some forest, right? A little bit. Because yeah, it is pretty boring. <laughs> What were you going to say? No. <laughs> I'm just Don't worry. Lots and lots of farms. <laughs> yeah, a lot of countryside. Countryside. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're going to notice. And um, as probably can, Carrie can attest to, the weather is varying depending on season. It has something of a humid type of climate where it's hot and humid during the summer, a little bit colder during the winter time. Am I right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, if you have someone who's native there, they can attest to this. Yeah, I feel like they only have two seasons. Two seasons. Hot and cold. Yep. Hot and cold. So let's talk about a little bit of brief history. Ooh, that's true. So this is what the map used to look like. So once upon a time, people thought that this land was uninhabited. That was until they came into contact with Native Americans that included the, Pon the Ponca, Pawnee, Atoy, and Missouri. Does that sound familiar to anyone? Missouri, Missouri. Oh, okay. And the Omaha tribe. 
Okay. That's where the name comes from, Omaha. Oh. So yeah, once upon a time we had this massive migration from the east all the way westward. And then that's what, how you got these little settlements over here. The earlier European settlements, ladies and gentlemen, have always been, well, Europeans from the West. Yeah, West Europeans like French, British, Irish, Spanish, and Portuguese. The latter of which is what I am one for of. Wonderful. Yep. So you're probably wondering, where does the name Nebraska come from? I apologize in, ahead, in advance if I'm mispronouncing this because these are Native American words and I'm not familiar with them. Wow. I'm not either. So it is said to be a result of Anglicization, meaning English sized, okay. of an Otoy word, Nebraska, which also comes from the Omaha Nebraska, and it means flat water. Okay. What they're referring to is all of this land being completely flat along the river lines. So whether you're talking about this river right over here, that river over there, or the branching rivers over here, which serve as fertile farmlands. Wow. Yep. So that's a little something you're gonna notice that a lot of names here in the US, yes, do come from Native Americans, like the Sioux Indians, like the Lakotas, not to be confused with the Dakotas. Those are all other people. Dakotas. Yeah. Yep, we talked about that last week. Was it last week? Oh, yeah, last week. <laughs> Memory. <laughs> so let's talk about what Nebraska is known for, shall we? Here we go, next one. Right over oh, here. Oh, my goodness. This may not look like much, but ladies and gentlemen, this is Asheville Fa Fossil State Park. What? Asheville Fossil State Park is called a state park, yes, but it's also called a fossil state park for a reason. It's because some of the rarest fossils were found here. Like dinosaurs? Yes, like dinosaurs. Awesome, Frankie. Good job. Dinosaurs, plants, ice age animals. You, you name it, it's there. So yeah. you're allowed to visit and hike and walk through there? Yep, and you're about to see what it is. Let's check it out. This is one example. Wow. Oh, my God. From what I'm understanding, this was one of the predecessors to modern bo bovines like bison and cows. Awesome. So, yeah, you're going to see fossils like these. And, yes, they're still being ex excavated to this very day. So you're going to notice a pattern here. There are only a handful of places where some fossils are being still dug up right now, one of which is in Croatia. Croatia. Which is a whole other country and a whole separate continent. But this is where the rarest you're going to find. And, uh, yeah, you'll find these everywhere, sort of. <laughs> it's a state park, so we cannot build homes or be No. Those. State parks are owned by the state. state. Okay. So, yeah, you would have to get special permission for that. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide, shall we? Oh, my yeah. God. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to, oh, my God, this is a long name. The Strategic Air Command and Aerospace Museum. Wow. That's a big rocket right there. Uh, oh, yeah, right over here. That's not a rocket. That's a spaceship. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Good guess, though, Frankie. It does yeah. look like a rocket. Don't it's you? designed like a rocket. It feels very patriotic, doesn't it, with all those wonderful flags? Right over here, and you got the American star over here. That's beautiful. And in case you're wondering, this says USAF, U.S. American Air Force. Nice. Yep. Love it. So you're probably wondering, what's the point of this museum? This museum is to house every single aircraft ever built during the Cold War. Whoa. The Cold War that lasted from, well, arguably speaking, 1945 all the way to 1991. Wow. 1991 being the year I was born. Nice. Yikes. <laughs> so that says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So let's check out some of the planes they have. Okay. This, Look at that. Wow. This is called a Blackbird. A this Black was a Blue. spy plane. These things would breach the, the atmosphere and they would be touching the rim of what would be called space. Wow. Yeah. And these things can pinpoint your location almost with 100% accuracy. Wow. 
These things were sent everywhere. They were sent to Kosovo. They were sent to Lagos in Africa. They were sent all over the world. And, I feel very and, safe. <laughs> and California too. What? California. If it was needed, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this was one of my favorite, <laughs> my favorite points growing up. I used to have toy scale models of these things. Kind of reminds oh, me of a. Whoa, look at that behind me. Fish you. array stingray. Stingray, yeah. They kind of model that. Oh, and here are some others wow. in the hangar. And you can walk and visit this museum? Oh, yeah. It's in Ashland. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah, so you'll see some a lot of uh, fighter planes. I think this one's one of the earlier predecessors of the fighter jet. And this one is, um, I think it's, a, it's called a stealth bomber. Oh, no, uh, a payload deliverer. And this one is more of a spy plane. For as well. sure. So yeah, you'll see a lot of this stuff. Wow. And if you know me, I love history too. So I'm going to have a lot of fun if I ever visit here. <laughs> wow. Yep. So you're going to notice a lot of this stuff. And yes, designed between the years of 1945 all the way to 1991. Wow. So doing some quick math here, that's like, what, 70 years-ish? 60? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So that is quite a long time to... Wonderful. Be making all of this. And the United States is not a small country, so we can manufacture yeah. this. And we have. So let's move on to the next one. Whoa. Yep, this is one of those, uh, what Frankie was talking about, space shuttle. <laughs> so yeah, they designed so many of these just for NASA. NASA only? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. Any sort of uh, space program the United States had, like NASA. Which, by the way, does anyone know what NASA stands for? No. I do not. Share with us. The National Aerospace and Space Administration. So, yep, NASA has everything to do with space and aero <laughs> aerospace. Awesome. So this is one of those that you're going to find sticking out like a sore thumb. <laughs> and it's on purpose. Who oh. else wants to go to the zoo? <laughs> I love the zoo. Oh, I would enjoy the zoo. Oh, all the animals. Yep. What's the uh, animals? This, again? <laughs> this is also a long name. Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium. Oh, the aquarium. Yep. How beautiful. And guess where it is? One stop shop. Yep. I have everything now. Yep. Animals, marine life, you got it. So, as I'm about to show you the next slides. Whoa, look at this. This is the that. aquarium section. These are sharks, these are fish, and uh, right over here, I know you can't see that, but that's also a shark. <laughs> wow. Great white sharks are huge. They're not great white sharks. They can't be housed in an aquarium. And uh, you'll find other sharks, though. You'll find sand sharks. You'll probably find a tiger shark here and there. And then stingray. Yeah, stingrays, too, yeah. That was a lot of stingrays there. Yeah, you know. Stingrays, manta rays, you'll find different marine life. And yeah, there <laughs> you can come up close. You need to have both. You can see a lion and a fish. Oh, sea oh, lions too. Aww. Yep. This is one of the best pictures I found. <laughs> you got seals right over here. They're just being playful and everything. What a neat experience. Yeah. And they're just basically like giant dogs, essentially. For sure. <laughs> Only they don't have fur, they live in the water. Yeah, you get the idea. cold, <laughs> is it? Well, it kind of has to be because it has to resemble their habitat. So if they live in cold waters, they kind of have to live in cold waters. If they go any further than warm, then yeah, not good for them. So let's move on to the next slide. Oh yeah, they also have a rainforest. Oh, oh, oh. In the middle of Nebraska. <laughs> oh. I am learning something every day. Yeah, they oh, recreated. Is there a rainbow cafe there too? Mm. No, honey, it's not the same. Oh. A good guess. But yeah, they recreated a rainforest right here. You got these little trails with bamboo bridgings. Yep. And you have these waterfall. trees that come from South America. So yeah. Wow. If you want to see some parrots over there, you can go there too. What oh, like the toucan, that toucan. Is that something like uh, Sea World? Uh, yeah, Sea World is also a mix like San Diego Zoo, LA Zoo, amongst others. Oh, so, amazing culture. Mm, kind of, yeah, but they have their own little biomes for everything. I've been to Sea World. 
Yep. Ooh, well, let's talk about sports. Yeah. So, University of Nebraska Omaha have the Mavericks. Yep. So, <laughs> the Mavericks are a they're a sports team from obviously the University of Nebraska in Omaha, and they also have both a men's and a women's team. So all together, so all together they have won three conference championships and four regular season t titles. Wow. So yeah, go Omaha. And who wants to talk about hockey? I love hockey. Yep, I bet everybody I loves love hockey. hockey. Yeah. Do you play hockey too? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> this is, these are the Lincoln Stars. Mm. So the Lincoln Stars, well, I guess you can guess where they're from. City of Lincoln, right? Yes. Yep. So the Lincoln Stars are a hockey team. Oh, yummy pizza. With Ooh. three season titles and two championships. Oh, and let's pizza. talk about some food here. Pizza, yummy. Yep. So this is uh, Nebraskan pizza. Oh, yeah. That's pizza? yeah, that's pizza. So you can see the crust right yeah. here, crust over there, the top is over here. Looks fantastic. So from what I was able to gather, I guess Nebraska makes their pizza in the squares. Yep. That's what makes them unique, and I guess their sauces are a little thicker. That's how I'm understanding it. Yeah. So let's talk about more food, shall we? How uh, good? Close enough. It's a breaded pork sandwich. So yeah. you get this huge slice of pork and these tiny little buns. It's a little absurd, but okay. Yeah, a little absurd. What do you mean a little absurd? It's your state. <laughs> Everything's big. Yeah. So, um, I definitely think you would need a fork, a knife, yeah. to eat that appropriately. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. And uh, yeah, that's not the only thing we're going to talk about. Reuben sandwiches. Okay. I like Reuben. Yeah. Okay. I guess from what I was able to find from my research, brought over by Italian immigrants who were oh. moving from east to west. And they just gave up and opened up shop. I guess so. <laughs> All be yeah. yep. Who wants ice cream? Oh, yes. no. I love it. This is a Sunday. I love it. So this is an interesting story behind this. Wow. So the ice cream actually was invented by somebody by the name of Harold D. Pinky Thayer. And he came up with so many combinations. Chocolate ice cream with chocolate sauce, and then a scoop of vanilla ice cream with marshmallow cream. Yeah, no kidding. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yep. And so let's talk about some famous people, yeah. shall we? Who's that? It's Johnny Carson. I was going to say, Johnny I know Carson. that famous face. <laughs> Johnny Carson, known for the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Yep. So here's the title The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. So this guy was known for his lightning quick wit and being the influence for so many TV hosts like David Letterman. Yeah, so I guess without this guy, we wouldn't have <laughs> David Letterman, we wouldn't have all these other talk show hosts. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's talk about the people of Nebraska. So here's a physical map, as you can see here. And so as of, Long page. <laughs> As of 2019 and 2020, there are close to um, close to two million people living in Nebraska. They have well over a million, but they're pretty close to two million. I don't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the most common ancestries are German, Irish, Czech, and Swedish. Uh, I don't like this one right here. Irish and German. Irish and German. A lot of that has to do with the mass migrations from east to west. So you'll notice. We just got tired and stopped. <laughs> yeah, you'll notice a lot of things. Most people live in Omaha, some in Nebraska, in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. So let's conclude today's class, shall we? So we have this little license plate right here. And yes, if Carmen were here, the license plate would have been expired. <laughs> So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me just conclude by saying, despite what most people think, this place is a lot more than just flatlands and countryside. If one looks hard enough, you'll find some interesting things, rare fossils, interesting foods, 
some lovely historical museums and some fantastic zoos and aquariums. So whoever wants to go, pick your timing very carefully because it could get pretty hot during the summer and pretty cold during the winter. And quite a people too. Mm, yep. <laughs> You'll meet a lot of people there. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me. See you on the road. Okay. Hi, you guys. Jeremy, thank you so much. All right. Hey, you guys. So we have a couple of our friends here. Let me turn the computer around and say hi, you guys. Hey, there's Patricia. Good morning. Morning. What do you have on your plate right there? Oranges. You do. Frankie, good morning. Keith, good morning. Good morning. Bruce, what do you say? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What, do you, what do you guys have on your plates? Oranges. Oranges. Let's do it. Okay, let me make sure I can turn this around extra carefully as we go. Make a mistake up here with just you guys. It's just you and I here today, everyone. Um, if you notice that the classroom here in ADP, everyone, it's nice and quiet. It's just us. They're on an outing. Mm -hmm. They safely got their, True. what is it, their KN95 masks. Yeah. They buckled up nice and safe. They brought water, snacks, lunch, first aid kit. They washed their hands. They went to the restroom and they piled into the van nice and safe, spacing, nice distancing, followed directions and went straight to the park and outside outing to have some lunch, maybe get some fresh air, and then they'll come back around one o'clock or so. How fun is that? Hi, sir. Good morning. Yeah, we have some friends here joining us virtually. And um, anyways, I bought a product and I purchased one from home. Um, I think I purchased it on Amazon. And Amazon, yeah. this, do you know what that is, Bruce? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And do you guys remember what's my favorite color? Orange. My favorite color? Okay. My favorite color is orange. Orange, yeah. So what color is this? Oh, yeah. It is, right? Thank you. Okay, so this this is a blender, believe it or not. I have this tight cap. Let me show you. I put my items in there. I undo it. And in the morning, I've placed some juice, yeah. um, some strawberries, maybe a banana and some pineapple, and some ice cubes. It's still a little cold. Not a lot, but a little because it's now 11 o'clock. But I did this at about 7 a.m., so it's not really cold right now. But there's a button down here below where it says Blend Jet. I'm going to press this. Patricia, maybe you can help me. Oh. Come on over and help me press this button. So this blender is going to make my solid food into a juice. Oh Come on God. in, Patricia. Oh Say hi to your friends. Hi. Welcome. Could you assist me with my orange blender that I just purchased and press this button? Look at that. We'll count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Can you press it again? Funk, little teamwork. Good job. Thank you so much for your help. Now it's completely into a juice. I did it. You you so did it. And what I can do is maybe I can even have um Tui, if I can get a couple of little cups, they're actually over in the cupboard. I forgot to get those. Is but, that is that a smoothie too? Correct, and I'll have you guys try it. But I also purchased Frankie, can you come help me? Yes. That'd be great. Yes, I will. So what I'll, I'll do to me if you like, I will open this up for you. And if you would like Tweet to go ahead and pour a little bit, Tweet, if you want to pour a little bit, just a little bit in each one of these. So they for, can try yeah, they can taste them. that. And Frankie and I will work on this one. Ooh, Frankie, uh, come on over. So, Frankie, what's this? Uh, orange. Can you turn around and say hi to our friends? Hi, friends. Hi, everyone at home. Hi, friends. Can you say hi? Hi, Travis. No, who is that? 
Hi, Dustin. Yeah, that's Justin. Hi, Dustin. All right. Justin, what's this? Uh, orange. It is. Uh, orange. And you at home, this is an orange. I buy about, what number is that? Three. It's a number three. Number three. This is three pounds of little cuties that I purchased. Tweet, is your mom or family members eat these at all? Yes, it's fast sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're kind of yeah, lovely. I do two at home. You do two at home? Yep. Yeah. So what I have them do, um, Frankie, you want to bring me your plate? We'll show you what we've done so I don't waste this one. Yes. So what we've done is we opened them up. Um, if you guys would like to, because you're all spaced apart nice and safe. Thank you, Frankie. Come on over. Frankie has helped me. This is how the orange started. We have peeled it, and inside are these little lovely pieces of orange, and they're really small. You carefully eat them, chew them safely, and this is extremely nutritious. Is it vitamin D that it gives you, the oranges? Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Vitamin C. Wrong alphabet. A, B, C. Vitamin C. Frankie, you can go ahead and take this yes. carefully and try a little piece. If you notice, you can peel them. I washed my hands, so I'll show you. And maybe even Tweet can help. They're really tiny into small little safe pieces. Okay. When you get to your space, you can lower your mask yes. to try that. Yes. I'm going to turn this computer around. Patricia, would you like to test your juice? Yeah. Hold your little juice up and see how you feel about it. Keith, would you like to try your juice? Try your juice, Keith. How do you feel about it? Does it taste good, Bruce? What about you? How do you feel about that? Does that taste okay? good. Yeah? Okay. And then, um, Justin, I know you at home. I know you already probably had your snack or your breakfast. Yeah. But um, maybe you'll have juice or extra fruits at home in a blender. But we also. Tastes really good on them. Because this is your natural fruit. Natural. Comes straight from the tree right here to your home. This, this item I purchased at the store the other night. But if you read into the ingredients, right off the bat, a few ingredients down. Yep. Yeah, sugar. Concentrated. <laughs> a little bit of sugar, a little bit of sodium. 120 calories. Yep, yep. Oh, zero fat. That's a good thing. And um, 29 grams of sugar. But again... A little sugar isn't good for you, or isn't bad for you. It's a treat. It is bad. Well, I, I agree with you, but it can be a treat. It could be a nice, healthy choice. So, I, you know, we can go around and put a little bit of each. You could try this item, a juice in a concentrate that doesn't have any pulp. And then you can try your own oranges in your item. Oh, Correct. So I'll go ahead and let you guys try, and you can finish your blended. How's yours, Patricia? Is that good? Yeah. You seem to really enjoy it. Good for you. I love it. Good for you. A little trial there. Good job. Yeah, that's good. A little trial here. You can eat your oranges now. Thank you. There you go. Good job, you guys. I love it. Nice and safe. Extra, extra. Just. Tell me again. Yeah, I gave them a fresh cut. These are these were that's yours that you gave them from the. These are the healthy fresh cuts. These are from the the clients that were. Yep, absolutely. I wanted to make sure we were all good and safe. There you go, sir. Mm -hmm. And you could try your own little orange piece. Okay, so yeah, lower your mask. Yeah, I will. Take it out and then you can do that. Let me get. Good job, Keith. Wow. So do you guys feel like you're having a little bit of extra vitamins? Yes. A little bit, right? Not a bad idea. Sorry, it's really bad for you. What? I said sorry, it's bad for you. I have no idea what you're saying, sir. I, I said sorry, it's bad. bad for you. Oh, so is bad. Sorry, I wanted to make sure I understand what you were saying. 
Yeah, okay, and then what we could do is talk a little bit about our packets. I just want to cap stuff up real quick so I don't knock anything over. Okay, so as our friends, let's make sure we're all... Okay. Jeremy talked about Nebraska, and I think that's a wonderful state because, one, I was born there, and, two, it's right smack in the middle of our United States. You can't get from, what is it, Vermont or New York to California without crossing through. Well, you probably could, but from one day to another. So Nebraska, remember to stop in, maybe go to that zoo, because that does sound pretty fantastic. It is not dangerous. No, you just have to be careful. Yep, follow the rules, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So I guess today, what day is it today? Justin, can you tell me the day today? What's the day? Friday. What day is it today? Thursday? Yep. Is it the last day of March or the first day of April? April. It sure is. You're so smart. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about it is the title. The last day of March, 3-1. Today, it Eiffel is. Tower is 1,000 feet tall. Perfect. Go ahead and set up the table. Thank you so much for trying it. <clears throat> um, Rod Iron Lattice Tower. I'm not really great with all this reading. Let me look. Champ de Mars in Paris, France, named after an engineer whose company designed and built this tower. That's kind of a big deal. The Eiffel Tower, or as the French like to call it, La Tour Eiffel, is one of the world's most recognizable landmarks. Wow, that's kind of nice. The tower was designed as the centerpiece at 1889 World's Fair in Paris. Meant to the, oh, what does that say? Come moderate centennial. French Revolution, the show of France, France's modern uh, mechanical powers on the world stage. So basically, France was showing off their talents in the modern world, how, what they can build and make. I, I really think the Eiffel Tower is quite something to see. I have not been to Paris yet. I think it would be a lovely visit. Of course, when you see people visit there, it reminds me of such a lovely place. Everyone, when you go and see the movies and they talk about France, this is what they show, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. So I assume, I assume that's the most important um, landmark to go see. Wow, a thousand feet tall, that's quite something. That's too huge. It is too huge. Being that we're all about five feet, that's quite something. All right, fun facts about the Eiffel Tower. Every seven years, painters apply six zero. 60 tons of paint to the tower to keep it looking young. Wow. So every seven years, they paint this, this tower to, to refresh it. Now, when you go to paint your house, yes. it could be anywhere about 10 to 15 years, 10 years. I don't know. I live closer to the beach. It's between six and 12 years. It can get really yucky. So, wow, that's a big deal. And 60 tons of paint. That's a lot. That's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. It was built to celebrate the centennial French Revolution. Four decades, it was the world's tallest structure. Four decades. So what is that, 40 years? 40 years. Thank you, Tweet. So the Eiffel Tower was once the world's largest billboard. Um, just Steve, Eiffel Tower designed part of the famous landmark. He, he designed the skeleton support system of the Statue of Liberty. Right. 
Well, that's kind of cool because the Statue of Liberty isn't in Paris. Where's that? In, in the ocean. <laughs> it is. You know what, Frankie? I really like that you're thinking because the Statue of Liberty is in Liberty. New York. New York. New York. And it is, isn't it in the ocean on an island? Yeah, it's an island. You two are just brilliant. You guys are eating your um, your vegetables and your vitamins. Good girl with your sissy. No, it's my mom and dad. Ah, oh, wonderful. Okay, there was an artist, and uh, this. Um, Tui, help me with this one. Par. Parisian artist is in the artist who lives in Paris. Okay, so there's a Parisian artist. Who lives in, in Paris? Yeah, in Paris, they yeah. very famous about art. They have a lot yeah. of art. So what art is in there? Okay, so very, very talented artists live in Paris. Is that about right? And, and I guess that's very well renowned. So um, that that's that's fantastic. Radio saved radio saved the Eiffel Tower from destruction. Now I wonder how that goes. I don't know. The radio did. Let's find out. Today, more than 110 on the tower beam, radio and television broadcast around the world. How many steps are there on the Eiffel Tower? It's a lot of steps. I mean, if it's what, a thousand feet tall, how many steps do you think it would be? Just maybe 10? Yeah, 10. Let's find out. You could take the stairs to the bottom of the Eiffel Tower to the second floor, exactly 674 steps. Wow. 674. Holy cow, that's a lot. That's a lot of steps. I'm telling you, I'd be very tired. Then there are 1,665 steps up to the top. So it's a thousand feet tall, but you need to take over one thousand six hundred and sixty-five steps to get to the top. Oh my goodness! Wow. So much running hard. But the steps from the second floor to the top do not open to the public. It's not. Now maybe it's dangerous, or maybe it's just unsafe. Whoa. But I think, I think where they allow us to be is probably pretty fantastic. It's so. Unsafe. Yeah, it's probably safe. So I don't know if you out home, out there at home, have, have visited the Eiffel Tower, but maybe you know, phone in, let us know, see how you, how you feel, and how the visit was. Maybe it's something we should talk about when you guys start coming back in. Let's learn more about it. Let's find out how many tours visit the Eiffel Tower every year. So every year, the France symbol in the world showcases in Paris. Today, it welcomes almost, oh my goodness, I can't believe this, 7 million. 7 million. Not 7 visitors. 7 million. 7 million. A year. Around 75% are foreigners. Wow. So what that means is I don't live in Paris. I live here in Fountain Valley. I'm so, close up right. So we would be flying and visiting in Paris. We're a foreigner. Oh. We would be a part of that 75%, the 7 million visitors, making it the most visited mayor, uh, monument ever in the world to visit, the Eiffel Tower. So this is how wonderfully populated it is. We learned in Nebraska that there's a zoo and an aquarium and what else was there there was something else and um oh a forest a forest all in this one area i bet you they don't get seven million visitors <laughs> not in nebraska no way but that's a really big deal that is 75 percent of us the foreigners visiting that's amazing okay now, you guys did the finding the differences yesterday, right, Justin? We did this yesterday. Yeah. We did, right, sir? Okay. So we talked about the tower. Let's see what else. 
Oh my goodness. Wow, this is a really big deal. Find the hidden objects. Now I'm going to go a little bit closer to the screen. Find the hidden objects. So when you get these items at home mailed to you, Twee works really hard to make sure she has the right address. So email, call Elwyn, say, you know what, I'm not getting them. Please let me know. I'd like to get them. Connect with Henry. Email him. Let's get you set up virtually so you can connect with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Twee will get the things mailed out to you right away. Is that right, Twee? Yeah, yeah. We'll get the address to you. Otherwise, if you'd like to come join us and all our friends, we'll get that settled as well. Yeah. All right. Justin, do you have your paper out as well, sir? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And I know you guys are still working on your oranges and your juice to keep your vitamins. That was lovely. I love it. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. I'm, I'm glad. Okay. So here, your objects, find one. There's a music note. There's a, a water glass or a wine glass. There's a purse because we need to keep our items in there to purchase things. Oh, there's coffee. You know, Justin, do you drink coffee? No, me neither. Patricia, what coffee? You bring a quarter to Elwyn and we buy coffee? Yeah. Good girl. Anyone else do coffee? Okay. I love hard coffee. You do coffee? Tea? Um, water. water. She's such a good girl. Hydrate, hydrate. And then there's heels. Some ladies like to wear uh, pretty fashionable heels. I wear flats. I prefer to be safe and comfortable. I, slacks and sleeves and closed toe shoes. You have to be safe here at Elwyn around the warehouse. Lots, so of, mo dangerous. lots of moving parts. Okay. And then we see, is that a beret? Is that a beret to your hat? Okay. Uh -huh. Yep. There's the little hat. Oh my goodness. And perfume. perfume. Lovely smelling perfume. Now, mind you, perfume can be sensitive. It can be a little extra strong and, or it can be just faintly perfect, but it is a wonderful item. Yes. I have perfume. You know what? It does smell lovely. It's the perfect amount. Well done. You go magically perfect in Paris. Oh, boy. oh fantastic. Oh, boy. Okay, and then there's like a clothes hanger for um, for a seamstress and bread. I, I love, love a bread. good baguette, a bread, rye. I love it. Absolutely. Good stuff at a bistro. Oh, and then a chef's hat. A chef's hat. I think Paris is known for some pretty good food at bistros, oh. right? Uh, about everything, uh, music, uh, food, coffee, yeah, uh, fashion design, music. Yes, yeah, so that's why all these things is uh, just simple for Paris. Awesome. Okay. Well, Tweet, thank you so much for sharing all that. So that seems like a lot to be um, to be famous about. It's another place to reason to come visit. So when you're up here looking at all these items, take a minute. Right off the bat, I've noticed a hidden object, and I'll start helping you, a music, and I see one floating in a cloud. And on your own time, go ahead and color those in, circle them, whatever you decide. Justin, do you see that? Yeah. That music? And then right there in the cloud, on your own time, you go ahead and circle that in. Okay. Yeah. And when you guys go back to your classroom, you go ahead and take the time, circle that in, talk about the music that you enjoy. I think in Paris, you might hear a lot of violin, very soothing, calm, loving music that touches you, or you might hear opera, or I just envision a lot of, uh, is it called acapella, very individual music. And then, um, at different countries and states, maybe in Nebraska, you might hear country music. I enjoy that. Okay. Um, and then so as you move along, really take a minute and you find those hidden items. And as you decide, color them as you choose, okay? Take the time to color in the lines. Show your friends, show your loved ones, show your families 
Justin, tomorrow when we do class, show me, let me know what you've circled and what you found so All we right. can go over that together. Yeah. That'll be fun, okay? We can check it out. Yeah, and uh, very cool. Oh my God. Yeah, fun stuff. And if there's anything else that you guys want to learn, or again, we've talked about this before, if um, there's a packet or if you want more math, if you want more um, alphabet or gardening, we'll go outside of Elwyn. We're working on that. We've, we've got some gardening ideas coming along. Email us, call us, let us know. The staff will, will work on that and we'll get those items going and we'll start doing that on Tuesdays and Thursdays as well. Okay. Tell me again. I said tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Yes, it is. Okay. So, well, today is what day? Thursday. And the last day of March. And I really appreciate you guys keeping me safe, wearing your mask, following the rules, keeping Twee and I safe here at Elwyn. And I just want to make sure that you guys are happy and healthy at home. And thank you all for tuning in for our Nebraska lesson. And our blender, that seems to work really well for us and charges and it's portable. But really, at the end of the day, all these gadgets and things are great, but nothing is better than just a good old fashioned piece of fresh fruit. So eat your fresh fruit and drink your water, okay? Fresh fruit, Justin, and water, okay? Good job, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great, great afternoon. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Woo. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. So, Justin, we'll talk tomorrow, okay? And we'll do class tomorrow as well. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in and letting